Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It has been a while since I've talked about this topic. I think it's so important and really, really is protection for all of us in terms of our energy. We're going to talk about chakras and protecting them and so much more. And that's just a piece of what she does as a a life coach, but she's also an energy healer as well. And she's back with us. This is Transformational Thursdays with Mara Grob. How are you doing today? Hi, Steve. I'm doing well today. A little bit hot with this weather, but do you Yeah, well. <laughs> all good. It's all good. We got to, either way, whether it's hot or cold, you got to protect your energy. And I, I know this gets for some people a little woo-woo if you don't understand it. And I understand it. Listen, in my journey, I used to help a famous intuitive with a website that was all about this. Mm -hmm. Now I believe in energy and um, intuitiveness. I don't know what a chakra was back then, but here I am working. Then I figured out what chakras are later in life and then realized, Oh, that's what's going on. Oh, that's the reason I feel this way and all of it. So we're going to break it down today. Um, Seven chakras in our body. Those are the main ones, right? Can we start there? Exactly. So there are there are 13, okay? But there are some that are above and below our body. So we're not going to focus on that today. So when it comes to energy work and as an energy healer, the first step has to be clearing the energy centers, which is what chakras are, okay? They are energy centers within our body. They are not seen or felt physically. They're in what's called the astral body, but they can be seen and felt energetically. And people that are that work with energy, I, I see them, I feel them. This is how I can help people with, with their energy. So there are seven chakras in the body. They are located at different points along the spine, okay? They're each associated with a specific color and a specific element, meaning air, earth, water, fire, and ether. They are also linked to specific emotions and feelings in the body. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go through that a little bit to explain because this is how I know when someone is off because the chakra is in most humans blocked. It's not clear. They are energy centers, so they should be spinning. Most chakras, when they are healthy, aligned, clear, and spinning, your energy is moving through you. You are healthy. You are really, you're living your best life. But for most mm. humans, that's not the case. Our chakras are blocked because of things like trauma, negativity, um, all the toxicity that we're exposed to through our food, our water, our air, products, mm. our environment. Mm. It affects us physically and energetically. Chakras are affected. So the way that I work is, and I'm going to go through, the first chakra starts, it's called root, and it's at the base of the spine, and it's um, associated with color red. Then you move up to the sacral, which is in the lower abdomen, that's orange. You move up to the solar plexus, which is yellow, and that's between the navel and the rib cage. And then you move up to the heart, the heart, obviously, the heart area, it's green. Then you have the throat, which is in the lower throat area near the thyroid, that's blue. Then the third eye, which is between the eyebrows, and that's usually indigo. And then you've got the crown, which is the top of the head, um, usually violet or white, okay? So this is just to help people that don't know what chakras are. Um, sure. you, can, you can Google this. There's plenty of information out there that can show you. So as I said, they need to be aligned and they need to be clear. The other important thing is that there are chakras that hold masculine energies and some that hold feminine energies. That also has to be in balance. So the root, the solar plexus and the throat tend to hold masculine energies, which is the energy of taking action, right? The energy of giving. And the um, sacral, the heart and the third eye tend to hold feminine energies, which is again, the energy of receiving, of creativity, of flow. So again, if these are out of balance, and they are for most of us, because we live in a patriarchal world where we pretty much have to operate out of very toxic masculine energies and where the healthy feminine energies and the healthy masculine energies have been suppressed. So again, mm -hmm. Understand I'm talking about energies. I'm not talking about gender, male, female. 
Okay. And so I don't want people to think that I'm, uh, you know, speaking badly about men. It, I'm talking about energies that both males and females hold within them. So energy healing must for first clear the chakras. Um, I cannot help someone to heal themselves if their chakras are blocked. Why? Because they will not be able to receive the energy that's coming through. Okay. So the first step is allowing the, the chakras to clear. And the way I do that is when I'm coaching someone, obviously they're going to come to me. A client will tell me whatever their issue is. And I'm going to ask them certain questions about what are they feeling? Where are they feeling this in their body? What are the predominant emotions that are coming up for them? And when they start talking to me about this, I will immediately be drawn to a chakra or chakras in their body. Now, sometimes I will see the color will come to me or I'm going to just, I'll just know the part of the body where it's coming from. And when I explain what each chakra is about, that's how I can go about and help the client to clear it. So let's start with the root. Okay, the root is basically, like I said, it's at the base of the spine. This is all about our stability, our security, our safety, feeling safe in the world. It grounds mm -hmm. us to the earth. It's our connection to the earth, okay? So if, if it's blocked or if it's unbalanced and a client is telling me that they feel very ungrounded, like they're always up in, in their head, or they're feeling very unsafe, very unstable, they're in a lot of fear, then I, I'm drawn to that chakra. And I know there's a lot of work to be done to clear that. And that is one of the chakras that needs a tremendous amount of clearing because we are made to feel very unsafe in this world, right? From a very early age. Can I, so, can I share with you at this moment? Yeah, absolutely. Don't laugh. I hugged a tree today. <laughs> I'm not even I kidding. Yesterday. <laughs> I was walking my dog and I just, th this morning, and I walked up to a tree area and I'm like, it's almost like a magnet. Like I need you. And I just went over and I just got close to the tree and that's one way of grounding. Um, you know, had some stuff in the last couple of days and it's almost, it almost felt like instinct. Like I need to be grounded. Give me something. Yeah. So I get what you're saying. I love that you just shared that because people laugh at, you know, tree huggers. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> no, but Go ahead. Again, if we had time, I could do an entire, I teach a course on this. Wow. Trees hold so much energy for us and they transfer energy to us and they take what is what we don't want in us. See, They're I didn't know that. Transmuters. Yes, they are. I did not know that. But that's um, why you're drawn to it, right? Uh, final question on that. How much time do you need to spend with a tree, if you will? Is it just, you know, is it, you know, just a quick hug, just get close to it? Like, you know, and there's many other ways to ground. I've got a grounding mat right here on the floor that's connected to the ground lug of my electrical outlet, $20, yeah. another way to ground. Um, but when you, when you connect with a tree, what should you be doing to get the most well, benefits? First of all, you do have to ask it permission because the tree does have a consciousness in it. It's got energy in it. Like it's got anything. energy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It has a consciousness just as we do. So you ask it permission. And of course, a tree will always welcome you, always. And then you can put your hands on it. I love to put my hands on it or just sit with my back against a tree. And then you just like, you can feel the energy if you're very, you know, if you are sensitive to it and, and most people are, but a lot of people, you know, again, might think this is woo, but for those that are open to this, you're going to feel there is a transfer of energy taking place. And then, you know, I usually sure. I'll ask the tree, like, can you please take from me today what I do not need, you know, and, and you just, you can ask the tree to absorb whatever you know, whatever isn't working for you today, whatever negativity you're holding in you. And then you can ask the tree to share its pure, natural energy with you. Remember, trees are anchored into the earth. Their roots go very, very deep. They are like, in a way, they're like antennas, okay? They're yeah. very anchored to the energy of the earth. And they're also, because of their branches and because of how high they are, they are also connected to source energy, universe, God, whatever you want to call it. Sure. So like, they transmit this to us. 
And also think of what they do physically for our world, right? They actually cleanse our air. So it's no wonder that many people are drawn just taking a walk in nature. I love to walk barefoot now. You know, when you live in a city, that's not always possible, but as much as possible, if I'm in a park, you know, I, I take my shoes off or on this at the beach, on the sand, that's yep. grounding, you know, and it's great. You've got a grounding mat. Like again, oh, I, 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 I sold a house exactly two years ago and I would love to work in the backyard, renovated. I would plant all of that. I would never wear shoes. I don't care how dirty my feet got. And now that I'm not doing it, I, I feel the absence of it. Mm. Lasered story short. I'm part of a group that volunteers to help people. We helped somebody um, just mulch their backyard, clean it up. They were going through medical treatments. It's something that they wanted to do. They couldn't. And I'm there lugging mulch on my hands, you know, knees and everything. And the gentleman walks over. He says, thank you so much for, for helping my family. I'm like, thank you for letting me get in your backyard <laughs> and get yeah. in the dirt and have a reason to do it. So I, I, sorry for the digression, but it, just to illustrate why this is so important. And thank you for the insight on the tree taking. And by the way, if you feel stupid hugging a tree, I love the just lean up against, you know, with your back to it. Cause yeah, I'm just sitting here, just hanging out. <laughs> you won't feel, you won't feel like you're standing out. <laughs> exactly. But cool. no, it, it wasn't really a digression. It is all part of energy. That's it's, it's a good point that you raised it. We all have energy, every sure. consciousness in it. So to go back to the chakras, though, as we move up, the, the next chakra, the sacral chakra, is again another chakra that can be very, very blocked in humans. That's the chakra of self-worth, of creativity, of prosperity, of our sexuality. And if that is blocked, then there are a lot of issues that will come up. Um, most of that is you just feel really unworthy, right? You lack self-worth, you lack creativity, you lack, let's say, inspiration to do things in your life. You can become very manipulative you can be shut down sexually or over sexual, but not in a healthy way. And you can also have trouble manifesting money or prosperity in your wow. life. So this is a chakra that is very blocked in a lot of humans. Um, and even though it's, it's very blocked in women, particularly because of the location, it's in the womb area, but men, men don't have a womb, but you do have a, a space there called the Hara, which is, not a womb, you are not creating life the way a woman can, but it has that same energy in it. So this affects men just as much as women, but because of the suppression of feminine energy on our earth, this chakra can be very blocked in the majority of women. So there's a lot of work that I have to do there wow. to help um, people with that chakra. Then you move up to the solar plexus. The solar plexus is your power center. It's where you take action. Um, and so again, if that is blocked and out of alignment, you, you, you'll lack confidence. You will lack the ability to, to really just to go out there and do what you're meant to do. You'll, you might hold a lot of anger. You might be very perfectionist. You might be depressed. And here's the thing, even though chakras are energetic, they can manifest into physical ailments as well. If your solar plexus is really blocked and out of alignment, you could end up with the digestive issues or liver problems. So Remember, mind, body, spirit, everything is connected mm. up to the heart area. And the heart, obviously, is all about love, compassion, empathy. And if that's blocked, then, of course, there's a lot of anxiety in there. You might not be able to trust. You might not be able to, to, to allow yourself to open up to love. You might feel jealousy, moodiness, fear. So... Again, this, these are the higher chakras. The lower ones are the root, sacral and solar plexus. Now we're moving up into the higher ones. So the heart begins that process. Um, and again, the heart can be very blocked in a lot of humans because of, because of fear and, and because of people that have, let's say, been wounded you know, from, from relationships very early on in life. Then we move up to the throat. The throat obviously is all about your purpose, your communication, your expression, your inspiration. And if that's blocked, that's where you have trouble asserting yourself. That's where you will have trouble speaking your truth. That's where you might feel that you almost, you, you have an, an inability to communicate properly, to express yourself. Like you'll feel like when you want to speak, there's something holding you back. And I've seen that in a lot of my clients. That's a very, very common chakra because wow. we've been told to be quiet, right? 
We've been told to suppress our emotions. Then we move up to the third eye. And the third eye is all about your insight, your intuition, self-knowledge, okay? And when that's not uh, in alignment, again, you, you lose the ability to see, but not see with the eyes, to see beyond, to be able to, I guess the word is a, a BS detector, <laughs> if you know what I, I mean. I can't believe you said that because somebody told me in the last year that my third eye um, was blocked and it, they try to you know free it up a little bit, but it's still blocked, but I make up for it in another chakra and my, I have a keen sense of spotting BS. Exactly what was said just, <laughs> and that's why I brought that up. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's, oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Wow. But yeah, it's, it's the, it's the ability to see beyond just, you know, just the physical, just what's in front of you. So again, you can lose that, that insight that you have. And what happens is this is when you seek outside of you for wisdom and knowledge and validation rather than going inside of you. Um, you can also become very afraid of success or the, the inverse, which is you can become very egotistical. So again, it, it's it, this is a super important chakra to have in balance and it can manifest physically. Again, if you have recurring headaches, if you get blurry vision or a lot of eye strain, that's also a manifestation of the blocked third eye. And then finally, we've got the crown. And the crown is really your connection to source, to God, to universe. It's your enlightenment, your spirituality, your inner wisdom, your inner knowing. It's, it's, your, it's your higher consciousness. And if that's blocked, well, then you just, it, it's like you forget that you, you are also this powerful being because you're not just this insignificant human um, and we are far from insignificant, but you lose that connection and you start to feel really depressed and angry. You might feel this, you might also feel destructive about yourself because like I said, you forget that you do have this connection to this higher power. So I went through all of this to show that when I'm with a client or if I'm, you know, working on myself, and I'm recognizing these um, patterns that are coming up in the emotions that they're telling me and what they're going through. I know exactly where to focus the clearing. I know which chakra mm. to go to. I, you know, I, like I said, I'll see the color and I can feel the chakras blocked. And so I help it to get to get spinning again, to start moving again, because it's energy and energy is always in motion, right? So I hope this explains a little bit how the, you know, like the basics of, there's so much more, but this is just the basics of our right. chakra system and how energy has to be able to flow through the body freely in order for the healing to take place because you can't heal if the chakras are closed, right? I mean, it, just think about it. Water is not going to flow through a, a closed, you know, if you don't have a sieve and you're not allowing it to open, water just won't flow through it. It's the same concept with energy. So lots of, lots of questions here. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the chakras, they could be closed due to past traumas or stuff going on in your life right now. Mm -hmm. When you do a session with someone and you clear the chakras out, how fast can they get closed again? Is it, you know, could it be somewhat instantaneous if you're dealing with a situation? How does that work? Well, again, it all depends, right? It, usually when you do a good chakra clearing, they are clear for a while. Now, I also teach my clients how to do it themselves because you can, you're, you're capable of doing it, okay? It's, mm. it's really, it's the two most important things with energy is your intention. You got to set your intention and then you your visualization or your knowing. Some people are very visual, right? And when I say visual, I don't mean with the eyes. I'm talking about the third eye. I'm talking yeah. about, you know, so if your visual picture, you can picture light coming through your chakras and you can picture them spinning. If you're not visual, you have what's called a knowing. You don't need to see it. You just know or you feel that this is happening. So you should be able to do this on your own. Now, again, like you said, if you've had a, a good chakra clearing and you're feeling better and the energy's flowing, that can that can last for quite a while. But yes, things will always come up again. 
if you've worked through a trauma and you have really worked on the healing, that shouldn't block you again. But there could be, you know, a, a trigger, an incident that comes up and causes the chakra again to, to, you know, to close down. Not close down completely because you have cleared them. But what I mean is that, yes, it can close down. There's no set amount of time. It will depend on the circumstances. But I will teach my clients how to do this on their own. And they should be able to do this. It's a practice like everything else. It's not a one-time thing and it's done. That's, mm. that's really the concept. So- we uh -huh. would, you, would you say it's foundational? Like if somebody's going through, you know, some challenges and they they feel stuck or uh, just out of sorts, would you say step one, the chakras need to be cleared? Well, I I would get them talking to me first. Um, you know, I'd have to I'd have to get more information from them. But yes, that that is pretty much the first step energetically would be yeah. to take a look at the chakra. Exactly. Like what, where, where is, where's the blockage, you know, because when people are telling me that they're going through, you know, if they have a physical thing, for instance, like if they want Reiki, they're going to give me a physical part of the body that may, that might be hurting them, but that's not the root. The root will yes. be the blocked chakra that's yep. manifesting this pain. So I have to get to that point yep. that, so yes, that is the step. It is to get to the chakra, but first they have to share information with me, obviously. So the chakras are the first step. Yeah. Because I, once I have cleared that, then I can move to the healing part, which is like I said, you know, being the channel to allow the healing to flow through me and into the client. And then their body does the work because now they have this channel where it's, it's flowing freely. And then after that, I can I do help them set up a protective shield. And we talked a little bit about this last week, mm -hmm. where you can do this any way you want. Like I always picture this beautiful grid around me, and it's 360 and it completely protects me. You know, I picture beautiful golden, like diamond white light. And like that kind of light is so pure and so powerful and so high frequency that it protects you. So I have pe people can create bubbles they can create whatever color they want it can be a shield it can be a spinning vortex you can create shields that especially for people that are really sensitive to energy or empaths like me i've always been that way like if i'm in large crowds you know if you're like at a stadium or a concert or a mall or an airport a lot of people really are just very sensitive to that and it affects you and this is how i discovered about my energy healing because i used to be really impacted by like you know, so many people around me and all these chaotic energies. And you feel that and you don't know that it's other people's energies you're picking up. You think it's you. So you shield yourself. And this isn't like, you know, something negative. You you can set the intention again that you allow love and compassion and high vibrational energy in, but you will not allow the negativity. You will not allow the low vibrational stuff to get to you. And you feel much, much better. And it's, it, it has worked for me, and I know it has worked for a lot of clients, where you can be in these massive crowds, and you're completely like immune to the energies around you. So there is, that's energy shielding. That's wow. that's one of the methods to protect yourself. And not even just within the crowds, and I get it. Uh, side note, I recently took a strength assessment uh, evaluation, and it identifies, you know, 34 different strengths. Uh, number one was communication. All right, no brainer, I do this. <laughs> uh, number two, empath, like what? And it's funny because I'm the one that usually says to others, do you realize that you're an empath? Do you, do you realize that you take on others energy and I'm doing it? And I, I, and this is only in the last two months, I realized this with this test, but it was my wake up call to exactly what you're saying that mm -hmm. there needs to be shield protection. I'm good in crowds, but when it's individual situations and people have, challenges issues and i'm always there want to help i need to you know put the block up put put some boundaries there because it will just drain you make you ill and all of that um fabulous talking with you uh there i've talked to, to a lot of people about energy healing nobody goes as deep but clear at the same time as you thank and you big <laughs> plus i mean it's you run massively deep but it's not deep where we can't understand it uh how does somebody find you how do they connect what, what's your website 
Yeah, my website is soulquestlifecoachingandenergyhealing.com. Um, email is soulquestlifecoaching at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook, Soulquest Life Coaching and Energy Healing, and Instagram, soul.quest2020. And once you connect with me, then we can set up, you know, if you haven't worked with me, a free 30 minute discovery call, or we'll have sessions on Zoom. Um, because energy transcends time and space. You don't yep. have to be next to the person to do energy. Yep. And we didn't even mention, but you will feel better after your energy is cleared. You know, people report, you know, I'm sure yeah, that you've worked with, you feel lighter, you just have more clarity, a lot of different things come up after. Focus. Absolutely. Focus, right. Yeah. And physically as well, there, you know, ailments have gone away after energy clearing. Well, you know what? That's a great point because that's what's, that's what's going on. <laughs> you know, you got stuff, stuck energy and it's got to manifest some way. Why, yeah. why be ill? Why have, you know, disease? You, that's get, another. you address it at the energetic level first, yeah. it will never manifest at the physical level. And if more people understood that we have a lot more health on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, big pharma would be unhappy about that, but uh, that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's that's 15 podcasts right there to talk about that one topic. Uh, Tamara, exactly. thank you so much uh, for today. Really learned a lot and uh, always looking forward to next time we get together. It's always a pleasure. Bye, Steve. Thanks. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.